The fight against the coronavirus is gaining momentum in the U.S. Infections and hospitalizations have fallen significantly in recent weeks. But there are concerns the Super Bowl may have become the next super spreader event. Fans were seen in the streets celebrating Tampa's victory with few masks and no social distancing. Cases in the U.S. have topped 27 million, and more than 464,000 lives have been lost. Vaccination efforts have also picked up speed. More than 32 million Americans have received at least one dose of a coronavirus vaccine. Over 9.5 million have received both doses. But there are fears the race to vaccinate is not moving fast enough to outrun more contagious variants. The variant first found in the U.K. is quickly spreading across the U.S. and could become the dominant strain in the next few weeks. Meanwhile, talks to reopen schools are heating up. The CDC is expected to release its guidelines for resuming in-person learning in the coming days. Meg Oliver leads off our coverage in New York City. COVID cases and hospitalizations have declined dramatically, but tonight public health officials are urging caution. We have yet to control this pandemic. We still have this emerging threat of variants. Cases of the more contagious variant first detected in the UK are doubling nearly every 10 days. It could become the dominant strain in just a few weeks, already in at least 34 states, including New Jersey, where it's having an impact. University Hospital in Newark now seeing a nearly 50% percent increase in admissions. All these variants do is encourage us to vaccinate people faster. The more people are vaccinated, the more we will be closer to herd immunity. But today, South Africa announced they're stopping the rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine, saying it does not provide adequate protection against mild and moderate cases of the dominant variant there. The CDC announcing that Florida has more variant cases than any other state as maskless people partied in Tampa. And today we learned the first sitting member of Congress has died after being hospitalized with COVID. Texas Republican Ron Wright was 67. Meanwhile, New York Governor Cuomo says he hopes to reopen Broadway with some limitations, but gave no timeline. Open schools! And tonight the question remains how to safely reopen schools. San Francisco and Chicago have reached tentative agreements. But Philadelphia teachers said not so fast. The school district is hell bent on forcing thousands of educators into unsafe buildings held together, in some cases quite literally, by duct tape. Superintendent William Height. How hard is it to balance the well being of the students and the safety of the teachers? You have to do both, and, and individuals have to feel comfortable enough to to feel that it is safe for them to return. Not having in-person learning is disproportionately impacting poor and minority children more than it's impacting others. Meanwhile, New York City announced they will open middle schools next at the end of the month, and they also are opening a new mega vaccine site this week at City Field that will prioritize taxi and delivery food drivers. Elaine? Meg Oliver, thank you. For more, let's bring in Dr. Dara Cass. She's an ER doctor and a medical contributor for Yahoo News. Doctor, welcome. Good to see you again. We saw some images of people celebrating after the Super Bowl over the weekend. How concerned are you that this, in fact, uh, may have been a super spreader event? And what exactly would that mean? So we're very concerned that any time there's a large gathering of people, especially who are drinking uh, outside unmasked, could easily be a super spreader event. And again, especially since we know there is this more contagious variant in their community. We need people to understand that we may be at a downward slope for hospitalizations and infections, but it will not stay that way very long if our behavior does not change. We need to continue to mask up, get vaccinated, stay distant, and be vigilant because it is just it is you know just as easily to get us back up to another hump and another upward surge again. Yeah, on that point CDC director Dr. Walensky warns that coronavirus variants could reverse the recent drop in cases that we've seen here in the US. How big of a threat do these variants pose? 
So they pose a real threat if we don't change our behavior. We know that the lull we're seeing right now is because the gatherings from the holiday season, from Thanksgiving through the new year, this is the expectation we had, that the cases would slow down. But it also meant that we could ramp up vaccinations. These new variants that are more contagious will give us a more difficult time in containing the spread while we continue to vaccinate as many Americans as possible. So it's critically important that people don't spread this virus while we're racing against time and trying to get more people vaccinated. So some experts say that the decrease in cases can't be attributed to vaccines. So what is behind this downward trend and when might we start to see vaccines make an impact? So it, it is nearly impossible for this downward trend to be related to vaccinations, mostly because only a few million Americans are actually vaccinated at the full capacity. Uh, remember, we just started vaccinating people December 15th. So only since really mid-January, early February, have people been fully vaccinated against, against this virus. This lull is because the holiday season is beyond us. And now we're really into the next wave that we're going to see through the end of winter and, and into the spring. Um, so we know that we could head into a much larger surge with this infectious variant if we don't continue to mask up and keep our behavior to stop the spread of this virus. If the virus can't find you, it can't infect you. And we need to continue to think that way as we expand our vaccination plans. Dr. Cass, as we heard, South Africa is stopping its rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine, saying it only provides minimal protection against mild and moderate cases of the dominant variant there. How big of a setback could that be for the global fight against the coronavirus? So it's still unclear what this information means to the global th the global fight against this virus because we don't know if the patients that were being tested were at risk of getting you know hospitalized and dying. We know that all of the vaccines we have so far have been shown to be very good, almost perfect at preventing death from this virus. The reason they stopped this particular uh, expansion is because it didn't stop mild spread or even moderate spread of this virus. So we need to hold on really being wholly disappointed and we need to just wait for more information. It seems like we need more expansive experiments to understand exactly what happens between the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine and this new South African variant and exactly where it's best used around the world. Yeah, that's good to, to pause, as you say, uh, because we just need more information. On another note, the CDC is expected to release guidance on reopening schools this week. Health experts say that most infections in schools are coming from the community. If that's the case, doctor, might it be too soon to send students and teachers back into classrooms? And what precautions are needed to do this safely when the time is right? So I'm actually really looking forward to the CDC guidance because I think that's one of the things that we haven't seen over the past year is really targeted guidance to states and local officials to be able to empower them to open schools. We need to, yes, we need to support teachers and we need to make sure that they're prioritized for vaccinations. We need to make sure the buildings are not facilitating spread, but we also need to remember that frequent testing, surveillance of students, understanding what's happening in the community is really the best way to keep kids safe. But the spread has not and will not occur in the schools if they have the right policies, which means that you have to keep the classes small for now. You need to keep those masks on and you need to make sure that you're responsibly quarantining students if they are exposed. But if we do that, if we have good guidance, good testing and good vaccination measures, I do think that we can get kids back to school maybe by the end of this year, but certainly by the fall of 2021. Meantime, indoor dining is reopening Friday in New York City two days earlier than initially planned. But the CDC is advising against relaxing recommended safety measures uh, in the first 100 days of the new administration. Doctor, what's your take on that? My take is that just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And that even though the indoor dining recommendations will be relaxed in New York City, I don't think it's time yet for us to eat indoors. If you want to support your local restaurants and servers, you can actually order in and tip generously and then bring that food home. I just don't think that it's time yet to eat indoors, especially if you're unvaccinated, while we haven't even yet vaccinated the staff of the restaurants. I look forward to getting to make sure that those staff members and the back staff, the janitorial staff of the restaurants are vaccinated and protected before we put them into the highest risk uh, environment, which is to serve people who themselves are unmasked and eating and drinking. It's such a good point. Unmasked, there's no way to eat or drink with a mask on. Dr. Dara Kass, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Dara Kass, rather, thank you so much, doctor. Thanks for having me.